Hey AP, in this video, we're gonna talk about buffers. So buffers are the last section of our acid and bases unit, and it's going to combine something that we talked about in equilibrium, the common ion effect, with acid-base chemistry that we've been practicing. So if we remember, the common ion effect talks about the fact that there's a decrease in solubility of an ionic solid or salt in solution because one of the ions of the salt is already present in the solution before a dissociation happens. So according to the common ion effect, if one of the ions is already present in solution, then less salt is capable of dissociating or dissolving, so the solubility of the salt is lowered, aka it's less soluble. And we can go about looking at a solution of an acid with its conjugate base in solution, and we can do what we've done before. And then we'll talk about a shortcut, which will be much, much needed. So first, if we have a solution of HF, and then we also have sodium fluoride. So we're going to calculate the hydrogen ion concentration in pH and the percent dissociation. So this is the amount of hydrogen ions compared to the original concentration of our acid of hydrofluoric acid in a solution that contains one molar hydrofluoric acid and one molar sodium fluoride. And within sodium fluoride, we can see the F here, which means that sodium fluoride is gonna break apart into sodium ions and fluoride ions. Fluoride ions are the conjugate base of our hydrofluoric acid. So let's look at what we have here. We are trying to dissolve or dissociate HF. So HF in water. So hydrofluoric acid plus water. It's an acid, so it's going to donate its hydrogen. So we're going to have H3O plus and F minus. We're going to have an ice chart because this is a weak acid in solution. So we are starting with one molar hydrofluoric acid. Water is a liquid, so it doesn't count. It hasn't dissociated yet, but we also, in our solution, have sodium fluoride, which is a one-to-one -one ratio of sodium and fluoride. So I also have one molar fluoride ions in my solution. I, have, I don't have any of my hydronium, so I'm shifting to the right. X, 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 one, minus X, X, one, plus X. And then remember, because this is a weak acid, so it doesn't dissolve fully, remember these X's are considered insignificant. Okay, so that's gonna impact and make our math just nicer. So we would set up, we'd say that the Ka is equal to our products, H3O plus, F minus over our reactants, HF, raise their coefficients, which are all ones. Our Ka tells us is 7.2 times 10 to the negative four. And we've got X times one over one, which means X is 7.2 times 10 to the negative four molar, which is my H3O plus. And it asks for, so we know that, it also asks for our pH. Besties. Um, so our pH is the negative log of that. So we get our pH to be 3.14. The other thing that it asks for is our percent ionization or percent dissociation. So our percent is our hydrogen ion concentration divided by our original concentration of our HF times 100, so 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4 over our original concentration, which was 1 times 100, which means my percent ionization is 0 0.072 percent, which is super small, uh, which makes sense because it's a weak acid. So that, that lines up with what we would expect. Well, another name for what we have here, besides just a common ion of our fluoride ion with our HF, is we can also say that we have a 
buffer solution. So a buffer solution is one in which the pH of the solution is resistant to small additions of either a strong acid or a strong base. Buffers usually consist of a weak acid and its conjugate base in relatively large and equal quantities. So for the one we just did, our weak acid was HF, and the conjugate base of HF, right, of it in water, we have H3O plus and the F minus. Remember, the conjugate base is the product that's lost the acidic hydrogen. So our F minus is our conjugate base, our fluoride ions. And they're in relatively large and equal quantities. Well, we just had one molar HF and we had one molar fluoride ions. So relatively large concentrations compared to what we've been working with and equal. So we had equal quantities. Calculations are based on the equation for the ionization of the weak acid in water, which formed H plus, or we could say H3O plus. That would be fine, right? They're equal. And the Cb, which is our conjugate base. So in generic terms, we would have our weak acid plus our water, which then we would make our H3O plus and our conjugate base, our A minus. And our Ka for that would be hydrogen ions times the conjugate base over our weak acid. So everything that we've been doing. So this buffer solution can be made by mixing a soluble compound that contains the conjugate base with a solution of the acid. So we look for pairs where we have something that is our acid, usually a weak acid or a weak base, and something that has the anion part of it, right, the conjugate base portion in an ionic compound. So if we have sodium acetate and acetic acid, acetic acid, H, C2H3O2, sodium acetate has the acetate portion, which is the conjugate base of our acetic acid. If I have a weak base like ammonia, ammonia plus water, right, is going to absorb or um, take in the hydrogen ion. So that's going to make NH4 plus, so that's its conjugate acid. So I have my weak base with a conjugate acid, so I need to have a ionic compound that provides that conjugate acid. Ammonium chloride, NH4, that is my conjugate acid. So this would be a buffer solution as well, a pairing of buffers. If we know the Ka of the acid, the amount of the acid, and the amount of the conjugate base, the pH of the buffer solution can be calculated. And we're going to use something called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So let's go through an example and compare our old way of doing things with our new way, which is going to be this Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And that equation is on our green sheet. So it means, one, we'll probably have a calculation on our AP exam that uses it. And two, we don't have to memorize it, which is another good thing. So in example two, we have a buffer solution was made by dissolving 100 grams of sodium acetate in 200 mils of a 0.1 molar acetic acid solution. Assuming the change in volume when the sodium acetate is added is not significant, estimate the pH of the acetate or acetic acid sodium acetate buffer solution. So we have our acetic acid, HC2, H3O2. And the other thing that we have in our, in our here is sodium acetate, NaC2H3O2. And we can see that here I have a weak acid, right? And we know it's a weak acid because it gives us our Ka and it's a small value. And I have a common ion in my salt, which is its conjugate base. We are doing a reaction where we are looking at sodium acetate and acetic acid. And we have acetic acid in water and we're adding some sodium acetate to it. So we have our acetic acid in water. Okay, it's going to donate its hydrogen. So we're going to have H3O plus and C2H3O2 minus. It's a weak acid, so we know we need an ice chart. And we are starting with 
one molar acetic acid. We don't care about our water. We don't have any hydrogen ions present. And then we also have our concentration of acetate ions, which we need to figure out. So if I have 10 grams of sodium acetate, and it has a molar mass of 82.03 grams per one mole, which gives me 0.122 moles. And I want this in a concentration, so I divide that by the volume of my solution. It tells me that how much I added is not significant, so I can assume that my volume is still the 200 mils or the 0.2 liters. And when I do that, I get 0 0.610 molar for my acetic acid or my acetate ions. Okay. And then I'm shifting towards the right because I don't have any H3O plus, so minus X plus X plus X. And it is a weak acid, so our X is insignificant, so I can leave that out. All right, we want to solve for X. We know our Ka is 1.7 times 10 to the negative 5, which is equal to my products over my reactants raise their coefficients, and when I do that, I get x is equal to 2.79 times 10 to negative 5, which is my hydrogen ion concentration. So my pH, which is the negative log of that, is 4.55. So we can go about doing this the exact same way that we've done it before, where we have our acid, it's in water, we show what it dissociates into, and then we say, well, hey, we're going to add in some of a salt that has a common ion of something that we already have. We throw that in, and we say, well, how does that impact how much hydrogenium ions we actually make in our solution? Okay, so we could do this the same way we've been doing it. Or we could recognize and say, well, hey, this is a weak acid with its conjugate base, in solution, I have some concentration of both, relatively high, kind of close together, right? This is, you know, more than half of this concentration, so larger amounts of both. Uh, could I use a simpler formula? And the answer is yes. We can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which helps us find the pH of a buffer solution without having to use an ice chart. So it's really nice. And this formula is that we can sign the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. And this is also found on your sheets here. The pH equals the pKa plus the log. And this is your conjugate base. This is your base over the acid. So this is your Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So you could also say the log of base over your acid. And these are concentrations. So important to note that. So let's see if we get the same answer for this one. So if we're saying, well, we could have gotten the pH from the pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. All right, well, let's see. The pKa is the negative log of the Ka, and we are told that the Ka is 1.7 times 10 to the negative 5, plus the log, the concentration of the base, which is my conjugate base, so the 0.61, over the concentration of my acid, which is my weak acid, 1.0. Oops, don't need that. Well, in fact, when I do plug this in my calculator, I do get 4.55 to be my pH, and that is way easier than going ahead and doing an ice chart. So I just have to recognize that I have a buffer solution by having weak acid conjugate base of each thing. So let's take a look at another situation. I'm gonna calculate the pH of a solution containing 0.5 molar lactic acid, given my Ka, so I know this is a weak acid, plus 0.25 molar sodium lactate. Well, ic acid comes from eight, 
So this must be, lactate must be my conjugate base of my weak acid. I have concentrations of both of them and I have some amount of both of them. So that means I have a buffer solution. So I can figure out my pH by taking my pKa plus my log of my base over my acid. So negative log of my Ka, 1.4 times 10 to negative 4, plus the log of my base, so my conjugate base is my lactate, my 0.25, over my acid, which is my weak acid, my 0.75, and when I plug this in, I get 3.38 for my pH. That's way easier than making a nice chart. What else kind of questions could we get asked with buffers? Well, we could be asked to calculate the ratio of ions in a buffer solution or to make a buffer solution with a certain pH. So here we have ammonium chloride to ammonia. So ammonium chloride... NH4Cl, ammonia is NH3. We want to make a buffer solution with a pH of 9, and we're told our Kb for ammonia. So we're told we have a buffer solution. So that means, hey, I have to use my equation. pH equals pKa plus the log of my base over my acid. And I want to know the ratio that's required. So I am looking for this guy. So I'm looking for x, which is that. So the log of x is what I'm looking for. I know my pH is 9. And my pKa is the negative log of my Ka. I'm given Kb. So Ka we know is 1 times 10 to negative 14 over my Kb, 1.8 times 10 to negative 5, and when I do that, I get a Ka of 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. So negative log of my Ka, 5 did not leave myself enough room, like so, plus the log. So opposite of addition is subtraction, so 9 minus this amount gets me negative point. 2518 equals the log of x, and we want to get rid of logs. So to do that, on our calculators, if we look where our log button is, the opposite of log is 10 to the x. So I'm going to take the 10 to the on both sides of my equation. So 10 I did second log, get 10 to the x, and this is negative 0.2518, and I get 0 0.56. So 0 0.56 equals x. Now, I just did a ratio of b over a. So the ratio of b to a I got is 0 0.56, b being my base. My base is NH3, A being my acid, which is the conjugate acid, which is the NH4+, plus, we found to be 0.56. But that's not what it asked me. It asked me for the ratio, so I want the ratio of NH4 to NH3. So I want the opposite ratio. So that means that I take the inverse of my answer here. So if I want the opposite ratio, that means that I want the inverse of this. So right now this is 0.56 over 1. So I want the opposite, 1 over 0.56. So 1 divided by 0.56 is 1.79. So that means I have a ratio of 1 NH4 ions to 1.79 NH3 so it would be like moles. So I'd have for every one mole of ammonium, I'd have 1.79 moles of ammonia. So that's another type of questions you can get asked. You just want to be careful about what is it asking for the ratio to be. Well, what if we have a buffer solution and then we 
add in a little more acid because why not? Well, if a strong acid is added to a buffer solution, the conjugate base present in the solution is going to consume hydrogen ions, which makes sense. The base that's present is going to consume some of these hydrogen ions, converting it to water and the weak acid of the conjugate base. So that means that it is going to decrease the amount of conjugate base present and increase in the amount of weak acid. So I am decreasing the amount of conjugate base, which means that I'm going to increase my amount of weak acid. This is going to go up okay, because I'm consuming some of this. Therefore, I'm making more here. Okay. The pH of the buffer solution decreases by a very small amount because of this, which is not surprising because it's a common ion solution. So it's going to not change as much as we originally think. Because we are now adding in more ions, we have to use an ice chart again to determine the pH of the system after the strong acid has been added. So we have a buffer solution and now we're doing something to our buffer solution. So we have to look at our ice chart to see how that changes. So let's go through an example. I want to calculate the pH of the solution that results when 0.1 molar HCl is added to one liter of our buffered solution. I'm going to shut the door. So we want to look to see what we have. We have our buffer solution of our NH3 and our NH4+, and we're adding hydrogen ions to our solution. So we have to ask ourselves, when we add HCl, we are really adding hydrogen ions to our solution. So we need to ask ourselves, well, what does the hydrogen ions react with? Do they react with the NH3 or do they react with the NH4 plus? Okay. And the answer is, well, our hydrogen ions are going to react with the base portion of our buffer system. So the reaction that I'm looking at is my base with my acid, this is weak, so we draw our equilibrium, and that's going to make NH4 plus. So I look to see, what am I starting with? Well, we have 0.25 molar NH3. I have, I'm adding 0.1 molar HCl, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so that's 0.1 molar hydrogen ions, and I have 0.4 molar NH4. Okay. I am causing this reaction to happen. So I am shifting to the right because these two things are going to react together. And the smaller amount is my 0.1 of my hydrogen ions. So that's going to decrease and add to the side. So I'm going to have 0.15, 0, and 0.5. And here again, we could look at the Ka values and go ahead and also, you know, figure out, well, how do these things react with water? And then figure out, well, what's making, are we making hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions? Or we could just look at this and say, well, hey, I've got a buffer solution. I've got my conjugate, or I've got my base with my conjugate acid. So we say buffer solution. We've got a base plus its conjugate acid. And we can look up the Ka value of NH4 plus. We can look that up in our chart and we see that that's 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. So because I have my buffer solution, I can say, well, I'm going to use the henderson hasselbalch equation and say pH is equal to pKa plus the log of my base over my acid. 
the negative log of my ka plus the log of my base, which is my 0 0.15 over my acid, 0.5. And when I plug that in my calculator, I get a pH equal to 8.5. 7.3. So we do have to make a nice chart, but we don't have to solve for x and look at you know the secondary form of this because we can say we've got this buffer solution. One last type of question that we can look at, and that is the capacity of a buffer, which talks about how well does the buffer solution or buffer system work. And the buffer capacity represents the amount of protons, which we know a hydrogen ion is nothing more than a proton, or hydroxide ions, the buffer can absorb with a significant change in pH. So a buffer with a large capacity contains large concentrations of buffering component. That's why we wanted a higher um, concentration to make a buffer solution. The capacity of a buffer solution is determined by the magnitude of hydrogen or of acid concentration to conjugate base concentration. Since large changes in the ratio of conjugate base to acid will produce large changes in pH, we want to avoid this for effective buffering. We want ones with small changes. So to be perfect, or the best situation, we would want a ratio of one because it'd be the most resistant to change in hydronium and hydroxide concentrations, which is what we're going for in a buffering solution. So if I was asked to make a buffer at a pH of 4.3, okay, I can choose from the following acids and their sodium salts. So that means that their sodium salt would be sodium with the anion, the A minus. Okay. I want to calculate the ratio of acid to conjugate base required for each system to yield this pH. And which one would be best? Well... If I want my ratio to be closest to one, so I want to have, I want my HA over A minus to be approximately one, okay? And I am told that my pH, I want it to be 4.3 according to the solution I want. And if I have a buffer, that means that my pH is equal to my pKa plus the log of my base over the acid. Well, that is just the opposite of this, right? This is, this is acid over base. I want base over acid, but if I want this to be one, that means I want my base over my acid to also be as close to one as possible. So what I have is I'm looking for a situation for my pH, use the pKa plus the log of 1. Well, I know that the log of 1 is 0, so I'm looking for a situation where my pH is as close to my pKa as possible. So of these, I'm given Ka values. So I am looking for which one is going to give me a Ka value closest to here, okay? So if my pH is 4.3, I'm saying, well, that's equal to my pKa. I can figure out my Ka from that. Ka is just 10 to the negative pKa. So 10 to the negative 4.3. to the negative 4.3. I get 5.01 times 10 to the negative 5. So my Ka, 5.01 times 10 to the negative 5. So I want to have a buffering pair of acid to sodium salt that has a Ka value closest to 5.1 times 10 to the negative 5. Well, first I look at my magnitude here, 10 to the negative 5. Well, that's this one and this one. So these two are both good choices because they both have Ka values with the same magnitude. 
But then which one's closer to five? This one is. So that means that benzoic acid with our sodium. So benzoic ic acid came from eight. So benzoate. So our benzoic acid plus our sodium benzoate would be our best buffering solution if we wanted to have a pH of 4.3. So those are the main types of buffering questions that we can get asked and we will practice more in class.